back. Uh, this week, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Molinete or the hero, uh, the geometry of it, and what the dissociation uh, in our spine does in um, the process of doing the Molinete. Um, there's a lot of questions um, from students sometimes about what are the sizes of the steps of Molinete, how to decide how big this, the step is, how to decide where your hips are facing, how to tell what the alignments are supposed to be. And so I thought about uh, different ways that you can explore in your own body how to adapt your Molinete, how to adapt your turn around your partner based on your anatomy, your geometry, whether you're wearing heels or not. So today I'm going to give you some things to experiment with at home that are really easy and the idea is to take the concepts of geometry in the Molinete uh, out of the theoretical realm and really see how they apply uh, in the actual social dance floor because usually Molinete gets taught in a particular way and it's like this kind of a refined, very purified geometric form uh, that we think about when we're thinking about Molinete. But there is a difference from uh, that to the actual dance floor and how it looks. So first of all, let's talk about what the Molinete is. So the way I think of um, tango is that it's at its basic, in its basic, uh, most uh, fundamental form. Tango is about walking and then it's about stopping and standing, kind of staying in place. So the partners are walking in the line of dance, so a lot of vocabulary have to do with actual progression into space, but then if there is somebody in front of you and you have to stop, you won't just stop and stay there. You will work with the Molinete and that is the turn around your partner uh, as a way of um, continuing to dance. So Molinete is a kind of a fundamental part of the tango vocabulary and to me it serves the function of keeping the dance moving even when you're standing in place. So my partner today will be this wonderful lamp stand and uh, I encourage you to find something in your house that you could use for this. Uh, it's going to be really useful. So the basic principle of Molinete and the way it's taught and it's really when I teach it, I say it's one of the very few things for followers um, that you will memorize the pattern to in tango and you will always do it this way. So the Molinete consists of four steps around your partner and uh, it might start with the forward step. So it's going to go forward, side, back, and side, and then it starts over. So this pattern of forward, side, back, side, forward, side, back, side, the Molinete is always going to follow that and it's a, it's a predetermined, pre-agreed upon pattern that the follower will complete unless the leader leads something different. So if my, if my uh, partner, the leader in this case, starts rotating around himself, so if his axis starts turning and I'm attached to his body, automatically what I'm going to do is go forward, side, back, side, okay? Um, so that should kind of resolve for you at least the question of like, do I go forward or go back? Is it side? It's always going to follow that pattern. So the structure of Molinete, the way it's taught, is usually to say, okay, you have a center and you imagine a square on the floor, so the, the base, the square base of the lamppost here is going to help me. And so I imagine that I start at one corner and I'm going to take a side step. And in my side step, I see that the, um, the center axis of my partner is going to be aligned with mine. And I see a triangle drawn from the center to my feet. So then once I go towards the forward step here, I'm going to go forward with my legs and hips, but I'm still facing my partner, right? So from here to here, you have this alignment change. And so what is this here? This is your dissociation. So the purpose of the dissociation here is just to keep you connected with your partner with the upper body 
while you're making a forward step. So here I made a forward step. Now, from here, I'm going to pivot to make another side step. And I need to pivot enough so that by the time I pivot and step, I arrive at that same relationship. I have the center and my hips, my feet will in the side step will make a triangle. So that's the pure geometric alignment. Now the back step, which is the next step, is the really challenging one. It requires a lot of coordination with the pivot, you're stepping back, uh, the dissociation might feel a little bit more um, intense. So when we're practicing this, we're trying to make the back step as long as the forward step. So usually what I'll do is in the practice mode, I'll pivot and I'll really reach back. Now notice I'm still facing my partner. So here the dissociation is helping me stay with the partner and then I go back and I should arrive where I started. So purely geometric. Uh, approach here, just looking at what Molinete is in its fundamental state. We're describing a square. Side, forward, side, back, side. Okay? So that's how you would practice it. And so you might imagine yourself kind of holding something uh, like a ball or so that you can kind of feel the dimensions of your upper body as you go and you can work on just establishing this feeling of being able to be symmetrical as you're going around this pole. Now, when we actually start dancing, what you'll notice is once we take the embrace, it's really not possible for us to make uh, the back step so big. So most of the time the back step is going to adjust and so uh, in a more like social dance form, if I think about being as close to my partner as possible. And if I just kind of let go of the floor geometry, kind of let go of the square and just think about, I'm just trying to make sure that in my side steps, I feel this alignment with my partner, center axis, triangle on the floor. And then every time I make a forward and back step, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm dissociated enough that I'm able to stay with my partner while I'm walking in a forward or back step. So those two principles I keep in mind and I begin to move around. And what you'll notice is that as I'm starting to walk around my partner, my back step is going to get uh, smaller and it's also going to get faster. So most of the time, the back step is going to produce quick, quick, and then it's going to go slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow. So if you notice, I'm not really um, concerned with the square anymore. I'm just focusing on the fact that this is an axis that I'm rotating around. So one way that you can feel it uh, after you do it a few times, just like you this. can grab a strap and put it around the uh, lamppost and then put it around your body. And you can, what I would suggest is first start by putting it around kind of like your hips. And as you can see, the lamppost, I can pull it off axis really easily. So this is a nice kind of test. So I'm gonna face my partner here, and then I'm going to turn. And as I turn, I can I watch that I am still having the same tension on the um, strap. And then I step forward. Now the strap here is a really nice um, feedback because if I step away, then I'm going to pull it off. And if I step too close, it's going to get loose. So this will help me feel the geometry. So it's a little bit of a different approach to Molinete to feel it more as a result of something rather than a conceptual kind of uh, theoretical approach. So here's my forward step. Now I need to step and then I need to pivot for my side step. So I pivot, I prepare for side step. Notice I'm, I've changed the direction of my dissociation towards my partner. 
and I'm still having the two straps taut, and then I take a side step. And then from here, I'm gonna prepare for my back step. So this is the, the most challenging one. So I'm going to pivot, and I'm gonna step really close behind me here. This is, this is what I need to do to align with the axis of my partner. If I step further away, by the time I transfer my weight, I'm pulling my partner off my axis. If I step here, the same thing is going to happen. So the, it's really nice to feel the feedback from the strap here because the strap will tell you where is the most geometrically sound place for me to step so that I stay with my partner and I don't lose my axis. So I'm gonna step back and then I'm going to transfer weight and then take a side step, okay? And then I can do it the other way. So here I'm a little bit far, you see I'm pulling it off, so I need to adjust a little bit. So I go forward, side, so try to do it slowly. When you can do it really slow with control, sometimes I'm even like, forget about the pivot, just kind of walk yourself to that position so that you can feel it and then back and then side. And so this is a really nice way to figure out how to respond, um, how to make your Molinette a response to real time geometry. What's, what's occurring really rather than dancing and thinking about, okay, how long is the step supposed to be? Where are my hips supposed to turn? Well, this way you actually can feel the response. So you can try it with the strap around your hips. You can then try it with the strap around your upper body, and this will give you some nice feedback in your dissociation. So here, as I turn, I'll feel that if, for example, here, my dissociation does not occur, and if I just kind of go with, with the alignment of my hips, I will end up pulling on the strap. See, I start pulling the lamppost off the axis. So in order for me to stay with the lamppost kind of fixed in space, I have to turn and then I step and then pivot, side, pivot. So again here now I'm feeling the dissociation on the side, I'm really using my back to keep the strap taut, but not too taut. And then I step, and then side. So once you've done it a few times this way, you can then also use the same um, setup to kind of think about what is happening in your embrace. How is the embrace helping you? Because ultimately, if you can um, develop an awareness that when you're stepping, it's really like you're, you're reaching the line from your fingertips to your foot, that there's, there's energy traveling the whole way through the body. There's a line of connective tissue that's helping you determine where are you supposed to step. So, so that's for yourself, but also when you do that, what happens is that the kind of the proper tone through your body lets your partner know exactly where you're stepping. So if my arms are just kind of hanging out and they're loose, if I'm in close embrace and I just don't have any uh, information through my upper body, then what I feel as a leader when I'm dancing with a follower like that is that I'm kind of like guessing where she's stepping. I'm kind of, it's kind of fuzzy. I'm relying on like maybe touch here. I'm, I'm kind of, assuming that she arrives where I want her to arrive. But if there is a proper tone through the arms that's feeding into the spine and going to the leg, then it's almost like, in my mind, somebody's turned on the light and I can actually see all the way to the ground. So one way to think about it is um, what I like to do is take the strap and hold it above so that you're feeling an effort in your arms and then I also kind of pull it just, just slightly. Now obviously when you're dancing, you're not gonna be pulling all the time, but this is more to give you a sense that when you're moving, your arms are not gonna be completely relaxed and they're not going to be completely 
rigid in tone that they're going to adapt. So I imagine that I'm holding on to something here and then um, I'm going to start walking and I lift my spine and then I go forward, side, back, side and watching that on the forward and side step especially when I go forward here then I'm really reaching so this is my right foot forward I feel a line from my left arm through my right leg so every time that I step I feel that there's a continuity through the body so I've built up my spiral here that will help me to pivot and then I take a side step now for the back step, very helpful here to really feel the engagement of the right arm. So here, actually, my dissociation, um, I help myself to figure out how far I can dissociate by engaging through this side. If this side relaxes, perhaps I might actually go further away. So if I keep the, this idea of the geometry starting out from side step, by the time I pivot here, my body tells me this is it. I, I'm only able to go this far and so the length of the step is dictated by kind of responding to the real task of trying to des describe this pattern around the partner. Yeah, So try it out um, and uh, I think just kind of changing the way you think about the Milanete will be already really helpful. One last thing I want to mention, so as you do this exercise, you'll notice that how far away you are from uh, the other axis is going to determine the size of the steps. And that back step, if I'm in a really, really close embrace where the partner's not really letting me go at all, my back step might really be something like a, a cross, a back cross behind me. So imagine that I'm really close here, I'm just going to go uh, behind me just a little bit and then side forward side and then watch here I really don't have a lot of room I can pivot maybe this much but that's it so I'm not going to force my body to bend and, and reach the leg I'm just going to let the leg fall underneath me wherever it needs to and that will keep me with my partner so hopefully that um, gives you some things to think about, some things to play with. Try it out. Let me know how it works. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.